How long have you been doing the show? We've only had one season. So now you're starting season two? Yeah, yeah. Well, just know you're going to be very old when it's over. <laughs> you're, going to, you're going to be like, you're going to have tennis balls on your walker. You know, because I figure Hank's voice right here, he's going to be going around in a rascal. You know, and the final spinoff will be Chicago Hospice. Um, you're, so you're in Chicago, are you based out of Chicago now? Yes, I, I think I am. I, I, I kind of feel uh, homeless, but I, I think I, I think I am. I've been, I'm just not a good at committing, but I bought an apartment here and I, I think I do live here now. Yeah, this is my home. And I'm, I'm tech, I, I became a resident of Illinois. So yes, I live here. I think yeah, you're there, mate. I think that's about as solid as it is. I do, it, yeah. I do. And I have a lot of roots here. Oh, you do? I can't have, what, family roots and stuff? or yeah, my, Both my parents grew up here. My, I actually have some deep, deep roots. My, my mother's grandfather, my great-grandfather, he was the district attorney of Chicago, and then he became uh, governor and eventually senator of Illinois. Get out of so, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's actually, uh, his name was Charles Deneen. I'm Jason Deneen Begay. There's an elementary school named after here. And if you, all the parks apparently in Chicago is his doing because he said the people deserve the place to relax. Well, I love Chicago. It's a great town, man. I mean, I, I, I'm not a guy that, coming from Sydney, I'm not a guy that really enjoys the cold. So I don't like being there in winter, but um, that place in summer, I mean, it's hard to beat. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And, I, you know, I, the, the, the winter is terrible. <laughs> How long have you been on your show for? This is uh, the eighth season, but I actually, the character started on the second episode of Chicago Fire. So this is my ninth season playing Hank Floyd. All right. So this is a fantastic question for you. Yeah. So you got the part, right? You I got, do. You got you, you you got the part. This is eight nine years ago, right? Yeah. What was your first experience like on set? Oh, it's interesting. It is very interesting. So I told you I had all these roots in Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Both my parents went to University. It was like Chicago. a football game, you had like <laughs> fans on the sideline. No, no, nobody was here anymore. Okay. My parents had moved and. I grew up in New York and there was, there was nobody here left in Chicago. My brother lived here, but that's another story. But the, this is kind of interesting. So sadly, in um, say I, March of nine years ago, my mother died. And my mother and father were deeply in love. They'd been together since they were 13 and 15. And my father, who was the picture of health, died of a broken heart about two or three months later. Oh, gosh. And so this was a, a time that you can imagine. And uh, I got a call to play this character of Hank Voigt. They asked me, you know, did you want to do it be a two or three episodes? I read it. Uh, okay, I can do this. And it was Dick. And, uh, but he was this nemesis to the lead character on Chicago Fire, who was this golden boy. So he was a very scary, intimidating, tough, bad guy, uh, as written. And time went by. I went to DC, where my father and mother had lived at the end of their lives. And I went to my father's burial and I put him in the ground with my brothers and sisters. I went back to the house that they had in, in DC. I grabbed my bag and I got on a plane to go to Chicago to shoot my first day on Chicago fire. And I had this idea about the character. I don't play bad guys. I always say, let's play the bad guys like good guys and the good guys like bad guys. Mm -hmm. And I arrived on the set and the two writer, producer, creators of Chicago Fire were sitting there smoking their cigars. 
feeling uh, pleased with themselves. And uh, they said, oh, boy, uh, thanks for coming, you know, all that stuff. Dick loves you. I'm like, well, that's nice to know, because he had the one who said, I want Jason Begay to play this role, which is nice. And uh, they said, boy, you're playing a bad guy. And I said, no, I'm not. He's not a bad guy. They said, yes, he is. I said, no, he's not. And, uh, I, I, you know, and I gave the justifications for what he does. I said, what would you do to protect your child? You know, I made whatever I had come up with. Mm -hmm. And at any rate, so I played this scene that was very uh, intimidating and scary. Mm -hmm. And it, it was the first of was supposed to be a three episode arc. And I ended up doing 15 episodes. And the last episode was uh, the pilot for Chicago PD. And tell me about yours. Um, my, so mine was, well, we did the embedded uh, pilot, which was great. But the, I remember the first day on, on set, <clears throat> We had all five cast members there, and which was great because it's kind of was nice to for everybody to start together. Um, but I thought it was really cool. We were shooting up in White Plains, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. up uh, north uh, um, of New York City, um, and uh, Dick had come to set, and was, it was just great because I, I was not expecting him to do that because a lot of people wouldn't. You know, and as you said, he's got, you know, exaggeration slightly, but 35 shows on air. You don't really need to, to make the trip to, to manage the first day on set. So I was really kind of chuffed by that and kind of buoyed by that kind of commitment. I just thought it was really cool. Um, uh, and, uh, and he made a, a short speech, uh, which ended probably in a one of you guys probably know the, the line, but no, you don't fuck it up, up. Yeah. <laughs> which I just yeah. love. And yeah. I kind of, and I went through so many different machinations of what that means. I was like, okay. And then I got down to, to the, he, what he means is just literally just don't screw that up. Just, that's all you, you just got to do that bit, right? Because that's right. The first, you know Hit what I mean? Mark and say your line. There you go. Just do it. It's easy. Um, which I thought was really cool. Um, yeah. And then also just kind of, you know, I, I really enjoy the fact that the environment is such a big part of our show, you know, so we're out a lot, you know, we're upstate New York, we're Jersey, out in Long Island or something. And it was kind of the first day we were kind of out in the middle of the woods and, and, and kind of, I don't know, just kind of felt, but just everything felt like it was kind of careening in the right direction. So it was, it was pretty cool. You know what that made me remember the first time Dick came to the set, which was on the embedded pilot that I had met him. And uh, you know what really impressed? He was on the phone working out some really intricate deal about how to publicize something and dealing with you know networks and publicists and all this thing. It was a very you know precise conversation that took a specific kind of mind and as he hung up, I asked him a very kind of specific question of as a character choice. He didn't skip a beat and was able to help, you know, an actor with a moment, you know, so from this micro to macro, that may have something to do with why the guy is so good at what he does is that he's so oh, good at what he that's does. That's a great point. And, and because I do, I, I do kind of every now and then if I, you know, call him or something. I go, do I need to remind him, you know, <laughs> of anything, <laughs> who I am or the character that I play or the, no, no, no. He, that guy, I remember, and this is, this is a really cool thing I, I thought was I called him after this. I was going through this stuff in my head. Like I just really wanted to put something out for people yeah. during the beginning of the whole COVID thing. And, and I couldn't find a way to do it. So I'd called him to kind of, so I didn't even know what, I just wanted to get some idea of, was there something we can do and whatever else. And I, I think something happened with my call and he didn't get it for like 24 hours. And, and he called me back himself, which doesn't always happen. And I, he apologized about six times for not calling him back. I'm like, Dick, <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> You're running a nation, my friend. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's but okay, I think Mr. it's just President. a testament to the guy and, and, and kind of how in tune he is with every single part of it, which I just, I, I, I find it hard to hold on to my own stuff most of the time, let alone all these other things. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, he's daddy. Yeah, which I like. Yeah. What's it like working within the wolf world? What would you, what would you say there? Listen, there's a reason that Dick Wolf is Dick Wolf, and the organization, Peter, Arthur, our particular showrunners, the writers we have. You know, there's a level of excellence that we will not go below. And obviously, I'm sure you know from years of working, you know, sometimes you miss. And sometimes it just doesn't quite make it. And one of the reasons I believe we're still on the air and going strong is because we won't go below that level. And it doesn't matter what it costs. If it's not to their or our standard, we'll reshoot it and we'll fix it. And that costs a lot of money and it takes a lot of guts. And so there's a level of quality and that kind of uh, bleeds into a level of support. I feel very, uh, it's a deeply professional environment, but I also feel uh, that I uh, am safe to, uh, that they will tell me the truth. And, uh, you know, it's a collaboration. It's, it's, it's a, they, they allow me to participate in the scripts in even directorial and some kind of producing decisions. And, but that's based on, you know, experience and that, you know, I guess we all kind of, and I like this attitude, that the star of the show is the show. And I think that, you know, everybody, you know, there's a commercial aspect to everything, obviously, and you want to make a living, and a swimming pool is nice and all these kind of things. But, you know, I think we all really have the, the senior attitude that it's not about us. It's about, it's about the... 12, 15 million people who are watching us. So we try to, and, and, and that keeps me interested as opposed to interesting. And I think that that's uh, uh, healthy and it keeps me, uh, you know, engaged, excited, and, and, a, and a sense of pride and duty. And, and I, 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 I'm, I'm, I, cause I've done a lot of television and you know, there's, but this is a first class organization, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a reason that there's, it's not a coincidence that Dix is so successful, you know, because mm -hmm. he's a common enough, you know, I'm sure, you know, their shows, it's hard to get a show on the air. He's got so many mm -hmm. that are not only on the air, but are, but are going and going and going and going and, mm -hmm that's that's a level of genius i guess mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. i i'm 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 lucky to be within the umbrella you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that's it what what do you think <laughs> well that, that's just that's really well said the only thing i'd add to that is um and that's kind of part of what you said anyway but it's the it's kind of the security blanket you know what i mean you ha you know you know that yeah, and I've done a lot of television and it's even in film. I mean, anything, you know what I mean? You never have a guarantee that it's going to look good. You never have a guarantee. It's going to turn out good. You never right. have a guarantee that what you thought you were going to go, what you were going into is going to be the result. There's so That's many right. things that come in the, along the way that, that change the trajectory. And the beautiful thing about this is, and I, it means a lot to me is that, security blanket of the dick wolf world <laughs> you know the product's gonna end up good right Which we're lucky 
to create, to gives you the ability to relax, it gives you the ability to, I, I know they've got to cover. That's right. They, right? So I just got to do my part and do my part well and enjoy it and go through the process of it and all of those kind of things. And that's kind of just so comforting because obviously, you know, we've both been in the business a while and you, the other side of it is, it can, can be horrific. Yeah. And, and, and really kind of devastating. And, and so to have that kind of continuum, and as you say, for so many years, 30 something years, these guys have been doing this. They know what they're doing and they do it really, really well. And it's just such a... There's also, you know, being on a Dick Wolf show, which is a, you know, there's a certain, everybody knows what you're saying, mm -hmm. you know, and just as an actor, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a feather in your yeah. cap. You know, yeah. it's like, this is not, you know, some stupid, you know, show. We did, I, you know, and I think because ours is such a uh, police show. Yeah. That, uh, you know, and because of all the stuff that's going on, you know, with police and Black Lives Matter and all that stuff, you know, we for the three weeks before shooting, we were in heavy communication mm -hmm. with each other and, mm -hmm. you know, certain advisors. And I, I talked to a bunch of cops. So I, I, I felt like it was, I had kind of transitioned. And the other good thing with the extra time between, you know, instead of just waiting for a script, we had scripts early mm -hmm. and so, it gave me a lot of time to kind of get ready for it. So by the time we started shooting, and I think I speak for the whole cast and the crew, you know, we were, we were fairly zoned in, you know, cause I guess we feel this sense of responsibility, you know, to, to kind of address these issues, which is, it's fun and challenging and, you know, like we, thankfully we have some good writers and, and good, good advisors. And I, I'm really proud of our first scripts. So, you know, I hope, I hope they're not only entertaining, but maybe, you know, we're trying to, without being grandiose, maybe be useful, you yeah. know, try to bring about some understanding between these kind of disparate groups that, that tend to be at odds right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and it's tricky. It's tricky. It's tricky. So entertaining and educational at the same time. Yeah, or just, uh, you know, open, I got to know, we try to do our show like, one of the kind of the mantras is everybody's right. You know, yeah, no yeah, good yeah. guys and bad guys, you know, you yeah, just, yeah, yeah. and uh, so hopefully, you know, now there's a more kind of a broad viewpoints mm -hmm. that you can look at and, yeah, it's understanding, you know, it's, mm -hmm. that's what I, 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 I'm hoping, you know, we can start with. Mm -hmm. You know, just even as an actor, I think about things, you know, like I, sometimes I say, you know, if you want to be somebody, you got to understand them. And in order to understand them, you got to love them. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean you got to like them, but you got to, mm -hmm. you know, you got to be willing to be them, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so it's, it's, it's kind of an interesting, it's kind of an interesting moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, and how do you feel like you guys are addressing that in the show? Well, you know, we were kind of teed up for it because we've been dealing with a lot of race issues uh, for the last couple of years, but our final last episode was a, a, a big, it, it, ironically, it was a it was a big racial issue between, you know, a cop who had not one of our regular characters, but a, a cop who had, you know, profiled a young black man incorrectly and ended up the cop ended up getting shot. And the guy that he was profiling wasn't doing anything. He wasn't shot by the guy. That guy got killed as well. And it created this kind of situation where 
this black cop was kind of standing up to the blue wall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so that's exactly, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a perfect segue. So we're, we're continuing from there and kind of drawing out, you know, the bigger things. Cause now as we pick up, you know, it's post George Floyd, my character's kind of not more than kind of, he's a real kind of old school, you know, I know what I'm supposed to do, but I do what I have to do kind of guy. And he breaks the rules and, and that, that stuff ain't flying anymore. So he's, uh, it's a moment I think where the character and, and hopefully myself, you know, because I, there's a lot, I don't know, um, you know, that, you know, I think in any life well lived, there are going to be moments when your knees hit the ground and you look in the mirror and you, you say, this, this ain't working. Something's got to change. And so those are exciting, you know, things to, to deal with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's work. So it's fun, but it's, it's a, it's a responsibility. And, and, uh, you know, I, there may be people who are offended. There may be new fans. There may be, I, you know, I, who knows what's going to happen, but mm -hmm. uh, we're kind of going in uh, both barrels blazing, really kind of going for it. Yeah, so, that's really interesting. It definitely sounds like you were kind of teed up for this. Yeah. Where'd you get your fantastic gravelly voice? Um, I always kind of had a low voice. Uh -huh. I had a terrible car accident. Oh gosh! And uh, this was 20 years ago. I, I and I I turned over a convertible off the 10 freeway and it rolled down a hill. I wasn't wearing a seatbelt. I broke my neck. I broke all my ribs were through my lungs. What? Broke my back in a couple of places. Oh sternum gosh. was split. Heart out here. Anyway, and I so I was in a coma for three and a half weeks. And I, interestingly in the coma, I died. So I had died and come back. That's a whole other story. But what really made my voice this way is that obviously I was on life support and was intubated. And whenever I would be close to coming out of the coma, the first thing I do is grab that tube and pull it out. So I kind of scratched myself up. And uh, oh, it's good for playing Hank Voigt, but I think my days of playing the friendly dad next door are over. Wow. I, I was not expecting that answer to that, to that question, that's for sure. Yeah. I, don't know, I remember years ago, and um, firstly, actually, congratulations on getting the, through the whole thing. And, and I mean, that must yeah. be. It was uh, life changing. I bet. I yeah. broke my back uh, as well. So, I mean, I, you broke a lot more things than I did, but I broke my back, and I know how much of a struggle. That's been for me, so I can only imagine how. I, I'm okay now. I, I, I really, I, I. Yeah, the only real lasting effect is I'm blind in my left eye, okay. legally, because right. I popped an optic nerve when I was in the coma. Right. But that's, I, you know, I've. I don't know. It's weird, and my lungs are. My thoracic cavity is somewhat compromised, but you know, I used to be an athlete, so now I'm just a regular old man. Yeah, regular. So March, just because this whole thing has been such a fascinating year in, in, in so many different ways, but for us, uh, we shut down in the middle of March. Did you kind of have a similar kind of thing, or how was your, what was your as, kind of? As a matter of fact, I remember our last day of shooting was March 12th, which is my birthday. And I was, I had planned, I was gonna, I left work and I was gonna get on a flight because they gave me off the 13th, which was a Friday, mm -hmm. Friday the 13th. Mm. But, uh, cause I was gonna go meet my kids. And yeah. I, I just said, and, and we canceled everything. And then I didn't leave my house for a long time. So wow. I just, I ate cake by myself that night, uh -huh. and uh, and little, that was little, it. Yeah, middle of March. Yeah, we shut down. Self birthday celebration there. It's okay. I've and it was my sixtieth. I've done a few of those. Actually, they're quite good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't mind it. You know, I don't. I I've had enough birthdays that. Yeah, know, exactly. It's fine. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, 
Yeah, it was, it was interesting. I, I don't know about you, but for me, what was, you know, when you're in that intense and that was, we were like just finishing up episode 20. So we were like, that's a lot of work in a long marathon. Yeah. And then to like shut down with no, you know, bridge it, that first month, and I'm not, I don't tend to get, you know, introverted. I don't really suffer anxiety uh, and things like that. I mean, I, I, I've experienced it, but not as severe or, not, or as constant as some people I know. And I couldn't put my finger on what the hell, but that first month was difficult mm -hmm. to just be, I, I, and I had this feeling was kind of this anxiety but I ended up kind of embracing it and, and the other, you know, ensuing kind of five months, I guess, was it about six months off? Seven. Was it? Yeah. So I just, uh, I felt, uh, I, I, I kind of feel like no good pandemic should go to waste, you know, and I, <laughs> I, 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 I took it as a time to, you know, hang out with myself and, 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 you know, get to know myself a little better. And I, you know, it was, it, it, it was worth it. But that first month was a confront for me. It was mm -hmm. tricky. Mm -hmm. I, I, emotionally, mm -hmm. you know, psychologically. Mm -hmm. it was good. Anyway. And then do you think that, because I, I, felt, I felt very similar, uh, do you think that that also was culminated? Because we were only at episode 16 or 15 or 16, but I was exhausted. You know what I mean? And, and, and the exhaustion doesn't kind of kick in until you're finished. You know what I mean? And oh, I wonder, like you're in the middle of this thing and it's just yeah, cut yeah. off. That's what I yeah. meant. It's such yeah. a, there's no bridge. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was, I, I, I got so much sleep. Why well, I finally, you know, I did a lot of sleep and I was taking one, two naps a day. Yeah. So I just kind of was building up and catching up on all this sleep. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, I think, you know, I, Dick described it best that I've ever heard it described. He said, shooting a series, is like laying railroad track while the train is moving. I like that. And, 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 it, and, you know, you just, if you don't keep going, you're going to get run over. And yeah, so yeah. It, it, it's, but it's, you know, it's exhilarating and it's fun. Yeah. But uh, it, it's tiring. I mean, I don't yeah. know about you. I've been back now. I just finished my first week. I start second week tomorrow. And, uh, after all that downtime, you know, and I was like gung-ho, we have a couple of great scripts to start. I'm really excited. We're going places that I find, you know, interesting and exciting and, you know, dealing with issues that I feel strongly about. It's, you know, blah, 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 blah. But man, I forget, I'm not used to this. You know, just the first two days I had all this like emotional, you know, stuff to do. And I woke up the third morning, I felt like, my body was sore uh -huh, and it sure. was just from, you know, work and work. I'm just not used to it. So, but I feel I it takes a couple of weeks to get in shape. And then <sighs> what I, I thought, I think it's an interesting thing too, that, you know, after seven months of literally f forcing yourself to not want to be doing anything, does that make sense? Yeah. Like, so, you know, even if you say, to yourself, I'll, I'll go out and grab a bite to eat. You don't because yeah. you don't want to go out, right? So, yeah, you, yeah. you know, or I'll go here or do this or whatever and all of these kind of things. And then all of a sudden to be back at work and structured and kind of have a particular regiment or, you know, something to do and something that you have to do and all that kind of stuff. That's kind of a bit of a um, kind of a mental challenge to get out of that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 Right now we're kind of the first couple of episodes are a little bit more towards COVID consciousness. You wear uh, masks. Yeah. We're, well, we're, you know, we're finding, we're trying to find moments where that works and where it doesn't. For example, we did a takedown scene the other day and, and it kind of just wasn't going to work with masks on. And then we did a scene the day before where we went to this couple's house who were um, kind of, against wearing masks so all of us wore masks so we're kind of dealing with that kind of thing and the protocol of how you come into the fbi building you get your your tests and your this is and your that which is kind of similar to what we're doing on set anyway um that's kind of cool i always thought if i got the mask 
I just, I wouldn't even have to learn my lines. I'd just do the whole thing. <laughs> you just thing. mumble. <laughs> and, you know, and the other thing would be, you know, maybe I could, like, come up with some better stuff when I see it all cut <laughs> together. You know, I wouldn't be locked in. I just, you know, you know what's like, really interesting? Just, you know, like, well. Yeah, well, it's, it's all becomes eye acting. There you go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so... Do you know what's interesting about it is is because we have to have our our masks on, <clears throat> um, or up, you know up until we're sh if if we're going to take the mask off in the scene we have to have it all the way up until literally camera rolls. Yeah, it's been fascinating um, the kind of delivery and the way that your mouth moves with the mask on, and then once you take it off and it's kind of been fascinating to watch everybody because it's kind of difficult to go from no rehearsal with the mask off straight to camera with the mask off. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I, yeah. I we, 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 I mean, I, do you have those little bags that disinfect your mask between takes? Yeah. Yeah, they, they're funny anyway, but I mean, I figure I, it's my mask. I'd just rather put it in my pocket, but, but yeah, I've got this thing. I'm playing by the rules and, but I, I haven't, you know, we, we wear the mask, but you know, Chicago cops, I haven't seen one with a mask. So we're not really doing it. We're doing, you know, certain social distancing things on the, on the show. But um, uh, I, I haven't had a problem with it other than they just, uh, you know, they're, they're, you get more touch-ups than usual, mm -hmm. you know, but it, it, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just, it's also hard to rehearse because, you know, you can't hear people as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We right. actually do our own touch-ups. Are you guys not doing your own touch-ups? Oh, my God. If I did my own cut touch-ups. <laughs> That's why I just leave it alone. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't, you know, the funny thing is, I mean, I don't, I, I, my makeup takes whatever, you know, I'm probably like you. It's like about two and a half minutes. Yeah. And I never know what they're doing in there. You know, it's just a piece of, <laughs> I'm just like, <laughs> so. Yeah, no, they come in, they've got like a hazmat suit on and uh, <laughs> they do the freaking, you know, whatever. Yeah. Around where my mask was, I guess. Anyway. And then are you guys, do you guys get tested every day or how's that going? Every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting used to it. My nose is kind of raw. <laughs> getting used to the... Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. but yeah. I, 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 you know what though? It's, I mean, it's... All told, I wouldn't trade it. You know, I, I would, I was, I don't know about you, but I was ready to go back to work. I, 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 I haven't taken a break that long in a long time, you know, and I just, uh, you know, I, I, I like acting. You well, know? you know, it's interesting you say that because when we first, when we first finished working, I, I kind of felt this real need to keep working so that people had something to do during that period of time. Does that make sense? People. Um, what do you well, mean keep working? You know, people were going to be at home. So people needed to watch television. They needed oh, yeah, 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 yeah. To escape into. They needed something to kind of, you know, and these are can be dark shows, but I get so much positive um, kind of feedback on these shows that obviously people kind of use them as some kind of, you know, method or meditation or something because they really, and look, I remember when I first started, I don't know about you, but when I first started watching Law and Order, it was like, it was like my therapy. The music came on and the, and the, and the camera characters started rolling. And I just lay there like I was, I was, it was all, you know, funky subject matter, but it was all making me feel good in some kind of way. I, I um, agree. I so agree. I, I, I used to like to watch Jerry Orbach. Oh yeah. Great. They were all great though. That whole, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, um, but yeah, I felt like, and I would remember calling the guys and saying, we should be shooting straight up. We should be shooting more stuff. And I'm like, that's not going to happen, my friend. So, you know, I kind of went for the first two months. I was a little frustrated because I wanted to be putting work out there. I wanted to be, you know, kind of fulfilling a void. I felt like that was the people were kind of leaning towards and the world was heading into, you know, Okay, mate. Hey, um, what nice a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Yeah, lovely to meet you too. You too. I hope we can uh, cross over. Yeah, I know. Well, I think now that you've mentioned it, we worked. We talked about it a bunch of times last year. I think that's in his 
in his kind of desired wheelhouse is to get all of those things. If anybody can get the two networks to work it's it not, out, yeah, yeah. it's, uh, you know, the godfather. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll make them an the offer line. they can't refuse. What's that? Yeah, He'll exactly. make them an offer they can't refuse. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Um, all right. Great, great meeting you. Great chatting to you. you Hope too. you have a great season. And you too. Happy and healthy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, stay safe and uh, have fun. Yeah, totally. All right. All right, mate. Have Cheers. a good day at work. Okay. Take care. Bye. Take care.